Praise God, another day we get to come together and to share in his word. This is a great opportunity for us to get to know the beginnings of this new year. And one of the things that I want to talk about is how we should choose the avenue of faith this week. This week is a great week to start believing God for everything that you hope for, knowing that you don't have the physical but you have the substance of the things you hope for, which is where we're going today. So let's get our Bibles out, get a pen and a piece of paper for your uh, convenience. And if you would like to, please, for this program, like and share. And at the end of the program, make sure that you pay attention to the bottom of the screen to see where you could best support this ministry. We also solicit your prayers and asking God, to shore us up and to make sure that we do everything that he calls us to do this year with great power and more than that, with the excellency of Christ to do it his way. The book of Hebrews, the 11th chapter, beginning at the first verse, and we'll just read that first verse for the whole thing today. It is found in Hebrews 11 and 1, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Now there are some various variances and very uh, important things that I'd like to talk about faith in your life and in my life. And one of the things that I want to make sure that we understand that faith is invisible. Uh, According to the scriptures, uh, it is very important to know that when you talk about faith, uh, I didn't put it in here today, but I want to regurgitate it for your listening. Uh, Romans 10 and 17, faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. As we hear God's word, we need to gather the faith of the invisible and make it become tangible enough to believe for the natural to grab it from the spiritual realm and make it manifest. Uh, one of the things that I'm, I'm most uh, intrigued about a lot of times is how well a seat has been designed to uh, take my weight. Uh, I'm a big man and it takes a, a special seat for me to sit in. And I'm, I'm excited about sitting down when I know it's the right seat because I have to have faith to believe that the seat is going to hold me. And so somebody had it in mind for a big person to be able to sit down. It takes a different framework for the seat that a person is going to sit down in of my size. So when I sit down, I sit down with confidence and I sit down knowing that it's going to hold me. That's the same way it is with you in Christ is that you have to believe that what you're willing to receive is great enough to hold you in life and to do for you in life what you can't do for yourself. One of the things that um, is key here is that you have to believe God for the invisible. And that can only come by what you hear, your mindset, how you see things, and all of the things that you now look at we understand that you already possess the seed of faith. According to Romans 12 and 3, it has been given to every one of us a measure of faith. So we already come here with a portion of faith. It just depends on how well we use it. So write that scripture down, Romans 12 and 3. We already possess the seed of faith. There is nothing that God gives us that he doesn't already have an answer for. There is nothing that he gives us outside of the realm of our possibilities, our potentials, and then our thought life. We already possess the things of God. We just have to know them and realize them and come to pass by thinking about them and then getting up and deciding to do what the Word of God says do. Because we always hear in Romans uh, 12 and 3 that we do get this uh, by automatically coming here by being gifted by God but James says that faith without works is dead and so we have to put some faith 
and some work into it and we can have just what God said this year if you're willing to put in the work. And so I know, don't write me any scriptures. It says that it's not by works lest any man shall boast. Uh, you know, we're not boasting about the works we do. We're boasting about the things that God has assigned for us to do and we have to do them with confidence. You never go into a game expecting to lose. You in it to win it. And this is what life is. And this is what 2022 is. You're in it to win it. Come on, say that with me. I'm in it to win it. Yes, you are in it to win it. And everything that we have, we have been gifted by God to win this race. And so the next thing is, is that you have to understand that to please God, you must use your faith. To please God, you must use your faith. This is in Hebrews 11 and 6. In Hebrews 11 and 6, it says that it's impossible to please God without faith. So we must learn that the way to God's heart is to please Him, to do what He says. Uh, one of the things that I like to talk about on this portion of faith is when Jesus was confronted at the wedding about the wine being gone. And his mother, Mary, she walks up to all of the disciples and she doesn't say anything to Jesus about her doing what she was about to do. But she knew that the faith of Jesus was going to, to, to employ all of those people that he had brought with him. And so she says to them, she says, whatever Jesus say, do it. Whatever he says, do it do it. And this is what faith is. Whatever God says for you to do, have faith and just do it. Nike was not the first one to come up with that. Mary was. Just do it. And so I think about that and I get happy when I think about it. And I think about how God employs us and he gives us the great responsibility of sharing faith with the world. So to please him, you must have faith and use that faith as he gives directives to it. Now the next thing is is that you change your direction because of how you believe in God. The direction of your faith is now according to what you believe. In Mark 9 and 23 there were some blind people that were there and he says, according to your faith, you receive according to what you have faith to believe. So none of us, we have faith, but according to what we have the ability to believe him for is what we're going to get. Some people have the ability of faith to believe God for tangible things, but some people have the ability to believe God for the supernatural. But whatever the case is, all of it works together for our good, according to Romans 8 and 28. And this is where we grow and we do what we need to do. The next thing that is, is key is how to get your mountains to move according to your faith. Matthew 17 and 20, here's what it says. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Man, is that what it takes? Yes, that's what it takes. To have faith in God. And to have faith in God causes you to move in a realm that is going to be beneficial to you. And God will use you in a greater way. The next thing that happens when you use faith is that truth turns into favor. Favor puts you in a position to solve problems here on this earth. And so it is very important to know that truth is the ability to use God's favor to make you problem solvers. When I say problem solvers, let me give you a whole picture of this. A whole picture is this, is that a doctor is in the business of solving the problem of illness. 
And so because of that, he gets paid according to the problems that he solved. Okay, a home builder, the kinds of homes that people want to build. He gets paid as a contractor according to the homes and the problems that he solved in a person's life when they want a home built. And so he gets paid according to his belief and how he builds in his favor. His favor is, is that God has put y'all together in order for him to have the answer to your problem. You may need a home. Your home may have been destroyed and you need another home. So the problem to solve in that problem is to get a contractor that is able to build you another home. And he gets paid according to the problem he just solved. Ruth says this in the book of Ruth 8, uh, 2, 8 through 12, that all of these things is for a reason. And God gives us favor for this reason, that he makes us become a gifted person. And every one of us have this gift of favor on our life because God will give us favor. And it is, number one, a gift. A gift is something you don't deserve. A gift is something that you can't pay for. A gift is given by the giver of that favor. And his name is God, Jehovah, God. And he says in Revelations 3 and 7 that he gives us his favor. And so that's the key, is giving us favor to do what he wants us to do. I'm reminded of Jesus when he was of age and he was walking in life and the Bible said that he grew in favor with God and with man. So God will give you favor with himself, but he'll also give you favor with men. Now what is favor? Favor is an expectation from God to know what you're able to do. Psalm 127 and 1. Favor is to be expected when you know God. Favor is to be expected when you know God. Favor, being as a seed, returns as a harvest. Favor, which is a seed, returns for us as a harvest. And this is Galatians 6 and 7. says that we will reap if we don't faint. We got to understand that doing the work of God causes us to have favor. And if we stick to the assignment all the way through, we will have favor with God and with man. And it will give for us a harvest. So pay attention that when God puts favor on your life, he puts favor on your life for two reasons. For you to accomplish a goal that he sent you out to do and then to bring a harvest back into your life. God gives reciprocity. He returns to us the things that we give for him. And if we give it for his sake, he says, we shall save it. But if we hold on to it for our own purposes and do it the way we want to do it, he said, we shall lose it in life. So how about it? Let's just do it the way God said do it so that we can return a harvest into our life. Favor gives us consistency. The harvest is consistent. Once you're consistent with what you do and you give your life to God and consistent with this lifestyle and giving God the glory and all the praise to your life, sharing with Him your substance, your time, and your energy, He returns to you consistently a harvest. There is no way you could sow into what God has said and He not give you a harvest. This is Galatians 6, 7, and 8. The next thing is, is that after you know that you have favor, the enemy wants us to always become fearful. This year, you cannot afford to become fearful. And sometimes you have to do things afraid. I talked about it last week, but this week I really want to expound on it. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. And the opposite of faith is fear. There is an opposite, and the truth about fear is, fear distorts 
your focus. Fear takes you away from your goal. Fear makes you doubt in belief of God. Fear causes you not to do everything that God wants you to do. Fear is so devastating to the believer that it puts him in a state of doubt. And doubt and, and unsettled nerves and all of these things makes us anxious. And the Bible tells us that we shouldn't be anxious because we couldn't have any of these things in our life and bring about fruitfulness. It will only bring about devastation and a loss of true godliness. The truth about fear is it distorts and changes your focus. Now, I put my glasses on today, and without it, I can hardly see. I can see enough to do what I need to do, but if I really want to be focused, I put on my corrective lenses. This is what glasses are. They help me and they correct my focus. So faith is going to help us correct our focus today. And you cannot walk in the spirit of fear. Fear is a spirit. Say that with me. Fear is a spirit. I know we don't have much right now. I know that we've had a lot of things happen to us in 2021. But this is a new year. God is giving to us a new possibility. We stepped across the threshold of 2021 into 2022, and now we're in a whole new dimension with a new possibility. And none of us can afford to keep walking back in 2021 and doing what we want to do and living how we want to live and saying what we want to say and doing all those things that take away the faith in our life. Fear is more deceptive than anything that Satan has to offer. Fear is more deceptive than anything else that goes on in Satan's world. Fear is more deceptive than Satan himself. And if you don't believe me, read Proverbs 29 and 25. This is his stomping ground. He operates in fear. He operates under the banner of fear. His keys are laced with fear. His ideas are laced with the ideology of fear. And so you got to understand, just like Job, he had this fear within him. And when things start going bad, he went in, in, into himself and he says, the thing that I feared the most has come upon me. And sure enough, as my grandmama would say, sure enough, after he began to fear, all of these things start coming upon him. Every crevice of his mind that had fear in it unleashed into his life doubt and confusion and hurt and pain and suffering and all of the opposites of what faith does, fear did to Job. But oh, thank God that Job had a breakthrough and he began to use his faith. And the Bible says that God gave him double for his trouble just because he chose to start walking in faith. Psalm 41, in my conclusion, is where I want to end up today. Psalm 41, verse 11 and 12, one of my favorite scriptures. It says, by this I know, God, that you favor me because my enemies did not triumph over me. And as for me, you uphold me in my integrity and you set me before thy face forever. It's a wonderful thing to know that your enemies don't triumph over you this year. It's a wonderful thing to know that we're going to have victory after victory after victory in 2022. But more so to know that God is with us. God is with us. Say that with me. God is with us. And because God is with us, he's going to cause great things to happen. He'll take those negatives 
just like the car battery. He'll take a negative and a positive in your life and he'll jumpstart you over again and he'll cause you to get some energy like never before. And you need to know that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things that are not seen. Paul tells the Corinthian church, he says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it even entered into the heart of man, the things that God has prepared for those who love him and are the called according to his purpose. Now I know that that is the most important thing that I could hold on to this year. Keep fighting, keep holding on. Don't you quit, don't you stop, and don't you give up. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, for every person that has heard this message, for every person who know that they're walking in the shadows of fear, I pray for deliverance, I pray for peace. I pray for understanding. I pray for you to guard the heart of your children. And I pray, Lord, that you will give us peace, that we may be able to guard our heart and our mind. Forgive us of the things that you told us to do and we have not yet done. And we're now in 2022. And things that you told us to do in 2021, we have not yet done. So Father, carry us over to greatness. And so we choose to believe. Let faith come by what we hear. And what we hear is your word. You are speaking, but who's listening? I pray that you would cause this generation which we live in to come to know you. And as we get to know you better, Father, I pray for those who need to turn. And I pray your peace over us. Guide us and keep us. Thank you for everything you've ever done for us. Help us to be mindful that you have not forgotten us and we're still connected to you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I'm going to ask you, for those who would like to support this ministry, first of all, pray for us. Second of all, you may give to the, to the ministry in various ways. They'll be down at the bottom. Just pay attention to those uh, uh, ticker tags that's down at the bottom and please give please do what we can to keep this ministry going we pray for you that are going through COVID-19 and then the Omicron variances and, and all of the different strains of viruses that, that, are, that are being uh, morphing into uh, different things and I want to pray again in my prayer time for you let us know how this is working for you. Inbox us. Uh, go to the ministry side of it. You could go to famtext.org, the website, and there's a place on the website for you to get in touch with us. And let us know how we're doing. We're going to start this year out great. We're going to finish well. And we're going to do everything that God called us to do. God bless you.